Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Goon Intelligence Sports Podcast Show. I am fresh off the Bayou Classic. I just made it home. Shout out to my alma mater, Southern University, for winning 24-14 over the Grambling State Tigers. Hey, man, Grambling's not having a good year, and um, we did everything to continue that. Uh, see y'all in the SWAC Championship, Jackson State. You've got seven days. you got seven days to get your stuff together. We coming. We coming out there. We coming to tear ass too. We ain't just coming to show up. We ain't just happy to be there. We coming to play and we coming to win. We remember what happened September 14th. It won't happen this time. We come and get you. But before I get carried away, how's everybody for Thanksgiving? How's everybody's Thanksgiving been? Did you get all the food that you wanted? Did you eat till you drop, till you pop? How was it for everybody? I know I was busy, but how was it for you? You know, let me know in the comments. Hey, we we about to finish this Thanksgiving week off, right? Hopefully, with a Saints win. Tomorrow, the Saints take on the Los Angeles Rams at 3.05 p.m. They got to play Los Angeles at 3 o'clock here because that's 1 o'clock there. And um, it's a late game tomorrow. Uh, Super, Super Dome people, crew, they got to get the dome turned around anyway because, you know, you got the Southern and Grablet end zones and the, and the Bayou Classic emblem in the middle of the field with the presented by Procter & Gamble on that. So, you know, they got to get all that turned around and, you know, put the Saints stuff back out there. So um, three o'clock time for them is uh, more than enough time to get the Super Dome turned around. But we have to play this game without maybe a key player. Eric McCoy, um, who's kind of re-injured his groin uh, against Cleveland, and then, you know, we had to buy a week, but um, he's, 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 he's doubtful for tomorrow. Let's go to the injury report. Tomorrow, so far, we know Lucas Patrick is not playing. The Saints made a roster he's, um, signing today. They brought up Kyle Hergel to the uh, the active roster, so more than likely he's going to play. Um, Dante Pettis has also been brought up again, and Kevin Austin Jr. has been brought up again. So more than likely they're going to play as well. Uh, Foster Moreau uh, was limited in practice on Friday. He's unspecified for game time, so I guess that means he's a game time decision. Jamal Williams has been full practice all week. He's questionable, but I'm, I'm certain he's going to play. Pete Warner also has been uh, full participation. He's unspecified for game status, but I'm sure he's going to play. And Tano Passamore, who was activated off of the physically unable to perform list with the Achilles injury. He's been full participation all week, but the Saints have 21 days to put him on the active roster. Uh, as far as I know right now, he has been ruled out. He's not going to play just yet. Uh, so they just may be sa saving him for the home stretch to see exactly how this thing is going to go. The Saints are four and seven. The Rams are five and six. And um, we know that Rams are pushing to try to make a playoff push. They're trying to make a playoff run. The Saints, though, four and seven. Atlanta is playing the Chargers tomorrow. Um, the Saints have a realistic shot to play spoiler and just come out of nowhere and take this division. Now, I am torn because I don't know if that's the right move to do. You know, you understand what I'm saying? You, I don't I don't know, man, because this team has holes everywhere. I addressed this last week in my video on the bye week. The Saints need help everywhere. And winning these games don't help our cause. You know, now I get it from a, from a professional standpoint. You have to go out there and try to win. From a logical standpoint and a fan standpoint, we want the best player in the draft to be available to us. And winning these games only makes our draft line go down and down and down. And if you don't have a realistic shot in the playoffs, because we don't, I don't believe that we can beat any of those teams. Like, I don't I don't believe we probably can play with them for a quarter and a half or whatever, but they'll just pull away from us. Like, the Eagles are playing much better than when we met them in week three. You know, uh, who else is in the... Uh, the, the, we got the Eagles, you know, you got Washington, who we will see in a couple of weeks. Um, who else? Uh, Seattle. 
Uh, San Francisco still trying to make a push. Like, I don't believe we beat any, beat any of them. I, I, just, I just do not believe we beat those top quality teams. Minnesota Vikings, like, we don't beat them. We play Green Bay uh, a couple of days before Christmas, so we'll see where we're at with them. Um, but you just you just want the Saints to, you know, I thought this, this season was just clearly, like, just out of reach. I thought Atlanta was going to run away with the division. But, man, it looks like they don't want it. Like, they, they have another late season collapse, especially if they lose tomorrow. Then that, that puts them at six losses. And if the Saints win tomorrow, then Atlanta is one game like in front of us that with, with four more games to go that's a legitimate you know thing to catch because we still got to see tampa bay so that that's not out of the reach you know so i i just don't man i it's just crazy that the saint like the saints are in this position and i did not think they would be um, so I don't, I don't know how we address that. I just, I just want, I, I say it time and time again, I want the Saints to win. I do. But we don't really have a snowball's chance in hell on doing anything with winning these meaningless ass games. Like, man, come, you know, but tomorrow, if the, if the Rams show up with Puka and Cooper Cup playing like they normally play, uh, not that debacle we've seen on Monday night where they let Saquon run all over them. You know, and then, you know, the Saints probably won't win. But if they play like they played on Monday night, because the NFL, once again, did not do them any favors. The, the 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 momentum is in the Saints' favor. We're coming off a of bye week. It's a late game at 3 o'clock. They are coming off a Monday night, short week. Now, they have a late game, but it's still 1 o'clock on their body. It's still 1 o'clock on their body. We have to come out and establish dominance. I'll let you, I, I'll see what, what kind of Saints team that we have tomorrow. We have to come out, if the Saints come out tomorrow and dominate and win tomorrow's game, then I say, the hell with it, go for it. Just go for it. Go j j go as far as you can go. But if the Saints come out tomorrow and get embarrassed and they, they don't look like, you know, like anything, then I say, shut the goddamn season down. Get ready for our top 10 pick. Cause we we uh we won a couple more games than I thought we would, so it's gonna be a top ten pick instead of a top five, you know. Load up one of them wide receivers uh, for us, you know, one of them uh, uh the guy from Arizona or something like that. And if uh you know Travis Hunter ain't slipping past three, so that's out of the question. Should do a Sanders ain't slipping past three, that's out of the question. Um, so get one of them wide receivers for us. But you got to do your job and lose to get us that top 10 pick. But if you win tomorrow, then go right on here. I know I'm all I'm on the fence. The fence is here and I'm right here, right here. I got to pick a side, huh? But I can't. Y'all let me know. Maybe I start leaning. Y'all present y'all arguments to me. Maybe I start leaning to your sides and, and go with what y'all want the Saints to do. But, you know, I'm going to give you a bold prediction, though. Judging from what I see with the Rams, and judging from what I see with the defense of the Saints and these wide receivers, Alante Taylor tomorrow is going to get cooked. He's been getting cooked the past couple weeks. It's just that the Saints have been doing enough on offense to get by. From what I've seen, I think the Rams win this game 27-20. That's what, that's, what, that's what I believe. I believe this, the Rams win this game 27-20, and it's only due to the Saints not being able to cover Cooper Cup or Puka Nakua. But it is what it is. You know, we, we, it's, 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 it is what it is, you know. But that's neither here nor there. You know, once again, shout out to my alma mater, Southern University. We're on the way to the SWAG Championship next week against Jackson State, uh, Tigers, and Jackson. Shout out to the New Orleans Saints. I hope you win tomorrow. And I kind of don't hope you win tomorrow. I hope that makes sense. You know, I'm just in a torn place. The Saints are four games, no, three games under 500 and really have a chance to make the playoffs. Man, that's how you know the NFL product is going. That's how you know nobody really gave, man. Damn, dog. Five the head coach and still got a chance at making the playoffs. Kind of foolishness is that. 
Just let you know, I'm in an upside down. I really believe that. I'm in an upside down like Stranger Things. I really am. This has been another episode of the Goon Intelligence Sports Podcast Show. I hope you had a very well and a very great Thanksgiving. Christmas is next. <laughs> you know, y'all let me know what y'all want for Christmas from the sites. You know, if, if, if uh, the NFL Santa Claus can deliver something to you, what would you want? him to deliver for the Saints? Would you want him to deliver a playoff appearance or do you just want him to give you the best available spot in a top NFL draft that's coming up? Y'all let me know in the comments. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you decided to share it with me today and I appreciate it for that. Until next time, peace.